Good afternoon, and welcome to the Chancellor's Annual Innovation Cycle. I am your host, Crystal Brown, District Dean of Educational Affairs. If you're not familiar, the Chancellor's Annual Innovation Cycle is an, it provides an opportunity for faculty and staff to share and promote their ideas that resonate and promote projects at all levels. The Innovation Cycle process and events are designed as a competitive grant challenge that is fun and rewarding. The purpose of the cycle is to produce significant outcomes that contribute to increasing the success of students, businesses, and the community served by Wayne County Community College District. The innovation cycle has three phases. The first phase, which was our initial application process, is where we received over 20 different applications from faculty across the district. After receiving these proposals, we went through a rigorous review process where we then took those proposals down to 11, which was beginning of phase two. With those 11 proposals, we asked those faculty to please give us a more detailed explanation of their proposal and also address how it aligns with the chancellor's objectives for the innovation cycle. We are now at step phase three, which consists of our Shark Tank. Well, what we did is we took those 11 proposals, did another review, and broke them down into four finalists. Those four finalists are now here today to present their proposals in front of our panel of judges, which consists of leaders from across the district. Our judges will have an opportunity to hear each proposal, deliberate, and then let us know which proposals they believe should have funding. The judges are looking to see how the proposals coincide with the chancellor's objectives for the innovation cycle, which are on the four pillars of success, ideas, building, and growth. So let's get started. But before we get started, I'd like to introduce you to those leaders from across the district who, have, who are our judges. We have Ms. Denise Shannon, president of Curtis L. Ivory Downtown Campus. We have Ms. Ambreen Amir, Administrative Communications. We have Dr. Patrick McNally, Campus Operations. We have Ms. Karen Shirt, Secretary, Secretary, my apologies, Finance. And we also have Mark McGrathic, Health Sciences, Northwest Campus. We are so glad to have you judges here today. So let's go over a few small little rules before we get started with this process. First, each contestant will be allowed up to 15 minutes to present their proposals. Once they present the proposals, the judges will have an opportunity to ask questions or provide comments. Once that is done, we will take a small break to allow our judges to deliberate and allow for our next contestants to set up and prepare to present. So now that we have taken care of the preliminary part, let's get started. We're going to start with our first presenter. Her name is Verna Brown, and she is going to start with her presentation called Step Up Success. Hi. Hello, everyone. My name is Professor Verna Brown. I've been working for Wayne County Community College for 23 years, and I'm an online instructor. And I created a program called Step Up Success. Step Up Success is inspiring, it's empowering, because it allows students to interact with the professor while they're online. And you know, online learning can be very, very, very challenging. So I thought I would create something that would allow the students to relax, meet me online, virtually, and get the job done. And so far, I piloted it last year, and it went well, and I'm continuing it this year, and it's doing very, very well so far. And I'd like for you to see the presentation to learn more about it. Hello. My name is Professor Verna Brown. I am an online part-time instructor 
for Wayne County Community College District Business Department. Welcome to my communication presentation, Step Up Success Program on Improving Student Online Learning. For this presentation, there are several objectives that will help online instructors understand the different facets of the proposal in regards to the Step Up Success Program. And this will help instructors understand the best way to approach and understand the needs of this particular program. In regards to the overview, students are changing and so are our ideas about how to help them succeed in an online environment. Faculty have noticed that one of the keys to success is involvement and students are having a difficult time or struggling since most of them are visual learners. Therefore, it is important to understand the best way to approach such difficulties is through the Step Up Success Program. In response to the program learning objectives, students must email the instructor to set up a time to meet with their questions or concerns. Once the time is agreed upon, the instructor will give the student a link to meet on one of the various platforms, Skype, Zoom, or Blackboard Ultra Collaboration. The program outcomes relate to the Step Up Success ability to increase its users capability in using the various platforms to communicate with the professor one-on-one -on -one and privately. This also aligns with the learning classroom goals, connecting with our students to meet the needs of the learning objectives. The goals for the project will ensure that the online courses meet the needs of the learners achieving their objectives for success. In closing, Step Up Success is a good idea for supplemental online instruction. It is a chat line, learning hub, and a place for the student and professor to share thoughts of learning for better outcomes. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Professor Brown, for providing this wonderful presentation. Judges, are there any questions for Professor Brown at this time? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Could you please um, tell us about your background and how you came up with this idea? My background is in adult learning. That is what my uh, doctorate is in adult learning and business. Um, I came across the step of success because my students reached out to me dearly. And I have a, at least 30 students in every class each semester with four classes. I teach um, business courses and computer courses, uh, business 225 and 228. The students really, really are visual learners and they needed an extra step and some of them did not know where to start. So. I knew they knew how to use their phones. I knew that they knew how to use their tablets. So I created something that they could use to communicate with me as if I was right there with them. And it's been enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Yes, yeah, so, so what do you think is the unique uh, point of your presentation? What is so unique about it? It allows the students to meet with me one-on-one -on -one to learn a specific type of 
learning that they want. If they need something like they can't figure out and they want me to just explain just that one little bit so they can move on. It helps them move forward without them emailing me all the time and, and dropping out saying, I didn't get that. Uh, I'm out here alone. There's no presence. There's no teacher's presence. And they need that. They need someone to be there all alone when they're doing online courses. So and this is really for the distance learning students or the students well, who are online? I wanted to expand it. I wanted to make it where we can have private chats with other instructors, which I have piloted that with uh, uh, Professor Leslie Smith and Dr. Belinda Moses. Moses, we piloted it already, where we get online and talk. Uh, we chat about the books that's coming up, because sometimes the books change. I may not get the memo, she may not get the memo, and then we can collaborate. It's all about collaboration, and it's good for office hours. Part-timers do not have office hours, and it will allow us to at least speak to someone, talk to our uh, students, let them know that we're there for them, especially when they're down or when they're up, and it has worked. Are you able to give us like a specific example of how you use the Step Up Success in maybe one of your classes, like a specific example of a student who was maybe challenged in writing or yes. was having a hard time with their homework? So how, how is it that you applied it? I didn't record it. I didn't record it. Uh-huh. I, I can do that in a recording. I do it every day. Step of success is when the student wants me, they'll email me. Okay. Let me know that they need, Ms. Brown, I cannot work the platform. The HTML is not working. Ms. Brown, I do not know how to do Excel, a function in Excel. I don't know why that function did not work on the Cengage platform. Can you please show me? We go on Step Up Success. I give them a link. They come in and they share their screen. I don't even show my face. They show their face or their screen. And I'm able to solve the problem then and there. They email me back, you're such a wonderful professor. I love you. You know, I get all kinds of I love yous. Uh, you, you're the greatest because I'm there for them. Okay, we have not done this in previous because I started the online courses here with Wayne County Community College and we did not have this involvement at all, not at all. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions at the time? Um, <clears throat> do you have a projection or a timeline uh, when uh, this could be instituted into other courses? Uh, beside, like outside of business? <clears throat> oh, yes. It can be instituted outside of business right now. It doesn't matter who, because I teach quite a few courses here, and I have other friends that teach in other departments, and we can do it anytime. I mean, we can start it today as long as they know how it works, how it operates, and what's needed. It's a little extra work. It's a little extra work on our behalf because we do not have office hours and it can serve as office hours, it can serve as a learning hub as I said before and private conversation. Sometimes it's just a chat and by the way you can talk to anyone around the world on Skype free because I do. So what excites you most about this idea? Pardon me? What excites you most about this idea? Oh, the students. When they email me back, I was going to show the, you know, the comments, but I didn't want to go overboard. The comments are hard. I mean, they just, they hit you right here. I mean, everyone tells you they love you when they say they love you or they love the way you teach or thank you, just a thank you. That's inspiring to me. That aha moment when you have taught the students what they need to learn. Without them, I'm quitting. I'm getting ready to 
you know, because they'll call, they'll text, they'll, you know, tell you that they're getting ready to leave because I can't do this. I need to go face to face. We need to keep them right there. The um, pandemic showed us that. We need to keep them busy, involved, and we need to stay involved as well. Okay? If there are no other questions or comments, uh, Professor Brown, thank you so much. And, and thank, thank you. you for thank you. Us thank you. Step up to success. That's right. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was a good presentation. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a small break and we'll be right back with our next presenter. Okay, we're going to take a small break to allow our judges to deliberate and then we'll be back momentarily. Okay, and we are back. We just got done hearing our first presentation, which was called Step Up to Success by, by Professor Verna Brown. And we are now going to turn our attention to Professor Henry Dryovich, who will do a presentation on WCCCD Educational Metaverse. Professor Dryovich. Um. So, hopefully this goes as smoothly as planned. And so, I've been watching technology as it relates to presentation and uh, the last 20 years has been for education. Um, you know, things like Blackboard or whatever we can do to, for students. Um, but long story short, a couple of weeks ago, um, I saw this uh, convergence, this opportunity. Um, Zuckerberg, who's going through all sorts of uh, legal issues, he's in charge of Facebook, uh, was going to make an announcement that is tra transitioning his company. And what they're going to be doing is focusing on what's called uh, the metaverse. And you may have heard about it. It's all over the airwaves right now. They changed the name of the company, called it Meta. And uh, so we need to, my presentation is to show you uh, an idea of, of how this is going to change everything, much like how the internet, when it became you know, easy for, to use, changed everything. It, you know, Whereas today, we, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between what's on the internet and what's not. Um. I'm the head of education here at Johnson & Johnson Institute, and our responsibility is to train surgeons all around the world. Today, we have a real problem that on a global basis, there's not enough access to safe healthcare because we don't have enough surgeons trained. VR tools like Oculus can help us solve this global crisis. With Oculus and VR, it's allowed us to really shrink the time in which we can put somebody into an experience. Ready, let me show you the video clips. Um, but these leaks uh, came from a couple of people um, that I want to mention. Uh, Sam Yulia on Reddit and Basti564 on Twitter. They did some digging around some firmware files uh, that were, were found on the Oculus website that, that hinted towards these kind of, that had these like kind of four setup videos. They're kind of like almost little tutorial videos that you'd find uh, when you set up your Quest for the first time. And they show a brand new headset, as you can see in these clips and the one that I've posted on the thumbnail of this live stream. You can start to see some of the fundamental building blocks take shape. First, the feeling of presence. This is the defining quality of the metaverse. You're going to really feel like you're there with other people. You'll see their facial expressions, you'll see their body language, maybe figure out if they're actually holding a winning hand. All the subtle ways that we communicate that today's technology can't quite deliver. Next, there are avatars.
Are there any questions or comments for Professor Drake? Yes. Go ahead. Thank you for the uh, wonderful presentation, Professor. I have a lot of questions. I come from a technical background too, but uh, so I see a lot of concepts here, very good concepts that are available. But do you have any kind of specific strategy how you will have a class in this whole infrastructure that you presented? Like, even at a conceptual level, how would you frame a classroom into this? Um, the last couple of slides I had to blow through quickly because I started coming up here my time was up. That's okay. Yeah. But there is a boatload of stuff out there. Like I talked about the two conferences and on a, um, on a folder, a Google folder, I've got, uh, there's three items there that you can go in and look at. But one of them is the uh, company that makes this, Oculus. now known as Meta, mm -hmm. um, oh, and the 3D software, which is made for a game, is they have for education, they have a whole, like, how to do it. For over the past couple of years, I've found all of the classes are laid out and pr produced for, for us already. It's already there. And this is for the development of something that would look more like games. And that's not what I'm here to pitch. I'm not trying to grow my game program in this conversation. I'm trying to, I'm trying to have the university be, excuse me, the, uh, this institution be where it needs to be because we don't have teachers. They're, they're going. I'm, I'm, my wife works for CCS. I hear what's going on on a, a different level, a different perspective. And, and there's, you can't hire people. They're, they're, they've retired. I mean, how many, I don't know the numbers, but how many instructors or full time teachers have retired from this institution? How are you going to replace them? Unless you've got something that's very attractive to these younger audiences, they're going to go to other places. So these are some things to consider. Strategies, there's a lot of stuff out there. My recommendation will be to have each of the departments appoint a person or have someone stand up and say, I could do that. I've got a white paper they could read. Each of them could read. And then from their perspective, how would an economist make a program? How would this work for, from an economist perspective? I don't know. I'm looking at it from... Not a technical background. My background is in fine arts, right? This, this is technical stuff. It's it's really not. I'll, I'll leave it there. Right. Did I, I hope I got near your answering your question? Sure. So so what is the biggest impact or the greatest positive impact you think this will have on our students or even the faculty? Are we just saying yeah, we're going to create this virtual classrooms or what is the any other angle to it? Okay, the impact is huge. The idea of like going to this institution versus any other right now is like who, who our students are versus who they could be. With, the, with, with ha having access to the resources that uh, these companies are like handing out, there are other competitions going on right now. The uh, last, one of the last slides there comes from something that is millions of dollars to somebody who, who wants to, who is awarded to, to do this stuff. So there's lots of resources for those that stand up now. Next year, you know, when everyone else is doing it, there's not going to be budgets for it. You know, it's like I tell people, get the COVID shot now, it's free. It won't be free. You know, it's the idea of like, right now there's great opportunity here and they're looking for, you know, who's going to, who's going to, who wants to do this? And then they're going to get the resources. They're going to get the, the technology, the programmers. You know, they're going to get. They're going to ha probably hand these out to the people that say, "I'll do this." You know, we'll do this. You know, so if if you if presented, people want to be in the on the in the front of the line instead of being. You know, we all want more numbers in our just so we can pick classes, right? We want, mm -hmm. right? Kind of like that. You want seniority. Well, this is an opportunity for seniority on a very large scale. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Um, unlike Ms. Saker here, I don't have a technical background. However, I have been hearing about Meta. I've been hearing, I uh, hear it's the new buzzword. Um, and I can see, just like we're you know, talking about it, I'm sure other institutions are talking about it as well. 
What would make your approach unique here to Wayne County Community College District? What would we be doing that's unique in using this meta universe that you can see how it wouldn't apply to maybe other colleges and universities? We would beat them to the jump, punch, jump, whatever, in front of the line. You know, you'd think CCS would be doing this already. I mean, this, this is like really quickly right now. Um, I, I heard that uh, since, uh, CMU Central is looking to partner with us because of our game program. You know, we haven't done anything, there's nothing spectacular in our game program. It's minimal at most, but yet because we're there, right, because we're there. I guess my question was more that us being Wayne County Community College District, having a diverse group of students, understanding what the diverse needs of our students are, what could, how could we utilize this program in a unique way that would make it distinct? How about a better one or a, a different point? What, we, what would it take per student to put them through, edu through education? Let's, let's say what it costs to buy their books and to pay for the, this, whatever. Um, we, we don't have a laptop program, you know, giving every, every student a laptop you know, or something like that. We don't have that, because so, wouldn't that be cutting edge? I know Lawrence Tech did that years ago and that was a big, you know, thing. Do, do you know how much this thing cost? This is a complete studio. I've got my hand things over there. When I put this on, I've, I've, got, I've got this, it looks like this room and I've got these screens and I can place them in there. It's already there, it's free, right? It comes, comes with it. The cost of this is $299. That's cheaper than any cheap PC or laptop I can find out there. And it's got a monitor and a sound system and all the soft, more software than you could, could imagine. Of course, it's a lot of game stuff. And there's a lot of education stuff if we have the resources for people that want to inquire, like, where is it? Because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for how I'm using this on a project that I'm working on right now, virtually working. Uh, one of my students last semester, his dad is in charge of VR at GM, and he's using that, the other version of this, the one from uh, uh, from Microsoft. And that's what he, his, he was at home with his kid, and he, that's what they're doing. They're, they're working at home with this, and that's where we need to, we need to be. Is like how are you preparing students for this? Give it to them, educate them in it. It's powerful, it's huge, it's opportunity. It's like, it's like right now. You know, the bookstore could, could have these, the library could have these. There's no, uh, my, the mask will not touch this, just maybe back here when I put this on, right? You could, you could replace these. You know, cleanliness or whatever, you could, you could have them, or you could just buy every student. I mean, how much do they spend in the bookstore if you have these available? Probably get them, you could probably get them in bulk at cost. I don't know, but these things should cost a lot more. Lost Leader, Ford Motor Company wanted to make, uh, they made the uh, Ford Pinot. It, it costs more to build the car than it did what they got for it. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's I forget the term for it. S skip some of mine, I'll just move on. I don't need to interrupt, but we need to kind of wrap up so we can get to our next presenter. Are there any last questions or concerns before we wrap up this presentation? No? Okay. Well, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Yes, we appreciate you so much for coming out and teaching us about Metaverse. And we will be back shortly with our next presenter and we'll give some time to our judges to deliver. Okay, we have heard two great proposals so far. We are now on proposal three from Korean Man entitled Life Merge, Integrating Community Health Work with Everyday Tools to Better Health Outcomes. Please welcome Professor Korean Man. One of the things I'm proposing is, I think the Detroit Wayne County Community Mental Health College 
is uniquely positioned to play a key leadership role in system transformation. And a system transformation that can lead to better outcomes for people who serve. So the Human Services Department is proposing is that we look at how to develop a comprehensive uh, model of care. You may need to have some additional staff come on board to do some of it. Um, we need to have, if we're going to use uh, mental health first aid, there is a curriculum already developed, so we would have to either have a staff on board who's trained in mental health first aid, or we would have to have somebody trained in that, and there's a cost associated with that. Uh, Memphis model, CIT, crisis intervention training, again, it's an existing curriculum, it has been proven to work. It started at the University of Memphis, uh, I think, either University of Memphis. There's somewhere in Memphis, one of the universities developed it, but there is training associated with that as well. And that uh, the cost, um, I think it's about $5,000, I believe. So there's, there's training associated with the cost of a number of the curriculums I'm suggesting we integrate. So we would either need to have staff here trained in those curricula, or we would need to bring someone on board who's already trained as a trainer in doing those curriculums. And then the time uh, it would be involved with the staff to have meetings. We would need to, have to pull together a steering committee, and the steering committee needs to include uh, people from the community. Those key partners I've talked about would need to be part of the steering committee. And you also need an implementation committee to move it forward. We're looking at multiple phases of implementation because this is a fairly large project and we're talking about uh, addressing a uh, problem that are multi-problem issues. And so we would need to have um, making sure that staff have the time to do the research. And since a lot of the staff currently are part-time, we would need to bring on board staff or increase the hours of the staff who are doing the work to be able to, to implement the program. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Professor Mack, for those, for that presentation. We truly appreciate it. Are there any questions or comments from our judges? Yes. Go ahead. The question, the, the curriculum that you're talking about that you say currently exists, how extensive is it? Is it a class? Is it three there, or four there's, classes? There's a number or? of different curriculums is what I'm suggesting. <clears throat> there is a, a mental health first aid was developed by um, the National Council on Behavioral Health. It's a three-day training. Um, and so once, you, anybody can go to the community-based training, but there's a train the trainer training, and we would want to be trained as a trainer. And that's a three-day training. Uh, mental, the Memphis model, CIT, it's, I believe it's a week or two weeks. So again, you would have to go to Memphis, and you would have to go through the university there to be trained to implement that program as a training. Um, for the adverse childhood events, there's um, Miss Kendra's curriculum. That's about $5,000, and you'd have to be trained in that. There's, um, so there's, I've, I've listed on the, the previous submission some potential curriculum that have already been developed that are evidence-based and have been documented to work. And so there are costs associated with a number of them, um, and it varies. And, and, and there's also a potential, I would think, to meet with the developer to negotiate, because it may be different because we are a college than it would be for community people who go through the plan. Thank you for the wonderful presentation, first of all. And so I know you talked about creating employment with this program if we institute it. What kind of specific employment opportunities are you talking I'm sorry. about? I know you in one of your slides you said employ it's going to create employment in the slide where it said the impact of the program. Am I correct? It, it will it create a, it will expand the capacity of the workforce in, in, in the community. Right now, there's, there's a prediction that there's a workforce shortage in mental health, particularly 
of frontline workers okay. and of psychiatrists. And they're looking at a need over the next 20 years that we don't have the capacity to address. And I'm saying this would help us address the capacity by creating frontline workers who could become practitioner extenders okay. for some of the people who are out there doing the work. Okay. And any other school has adopted this kind of uh, integration of Not that I'm aware of, no. They have, there are some other schools who are doing the uh, community health worker training. Okay. Uh, there's, I don't think there's any in Michigan, but there are some that have. One of the weaknesses, though, is we have not really integrated care because it's been done more on the primary care side. Uh, and they've used community health workers on primary care. We have not looked at how to integrate mental health, substance abuse, physical health, and, and the social determinants in a meaningful way. SAMHSA has talked about it. There was a report that came out. Uh, the President's New Freedom Report came out in 2001, and the Surgeon General's Report came out in 1999. They talked about the need to do integrated care and how we need to stop separating mind and body and do more whole person care uh, and address social issues of people. We have not done a good job in the field of doing that. And that's why I'm saying the college could, could really play a good leadership role in training frontline workers who can become the ambassadors and who could really create a movement of change in Wayne County. And I think it is a perfect storm if you look at poor health care outcomes. If you also look at uh, the, d the data I talked about was pre-COVID. There's evidence that COVID has exacerbated those existing problems. And so there is a need right now to do something to address those issues. The other piece that's important, if we talk about managing care, helping people manage their own care, there's, uh, there are technology tools to help people do that. A lot of our people don't have the skills to do that. And so we need to have somebody help them learn how to use the technology that's available to help them manage their care more effectively and to uh, make sure that they're able to purchase the tools that are even available for them to do. Thank you. Are there any other questions or concerns? All right. Thank you so much, Thank Professor you. Mayor, for coming today. Okay, we're going to take a few moments to allow our judges to deliberate as we prepare, prepare for our next and final presentation for today. Okay, we have had a great afternoon of hearing our wonderful presenters as they have presented to us today their proposals. We are now down to our last and final proposal of the day, and that will be from Desiree Myers, entitled DNA Barcoding on Local Species. Professor Myers. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to make my pitch. <laughs> and, uh, and so <coughs> my proposal is called Buns to Barcode, and uh, it has three components. And uh, it involves my students in my microbiology class. Great. Uh, so my name is Desiree Myers. I'm part of the biology department. And my proposal is called Buds to Barcode. And it has three components. It involves my biology or microbiology students, because I teach mostly microbiology. It involves the community. And it involves the planet that we all share. And that little guy over there, that's a box elder insect. Uh, that's why I'm here today. And you'll see how he, all, he fits in, in this whole story. So let me go to the next slide. But here, we're looking at a three-pronged approach. We want the community to be involved in collecting insects because it would be a fun thing for kids to do with their parents and so on. So it would be a citizen science project. And then in the classroom, we would actually use those very samples to isolate bacteria and even do our own backwarding of the insect DNA itself. And then the third component would be to send some samples 
to the eyeball project where they would do extensive barcoding, which is beyond our resources. You know, it's pretty expensive. So the collection would be by the public, by some community events, so just to get the public involved. So it'd be like a citizen science project. So they'll be doing the field work of actually collecting the insects. The PCR would be used to amplify DNA from bacteria that are from the insects. But when we do our own sequencing, that's very preliminary sequencing. It just gives you a little bit of information just to ID the organism. But with the insects, the whole insects themselves, we can send it to the eyeball project and they will use the insect DNA, not the bacterial DNA because they don't do bacteria. They will use the insect DNA to sequence the entire genome, which is a, like a ton of material. And then they will identify it because they have entomologists on staff, they will identify it. So if we find some unique bumblebee in the woods, you know, they would identify it, sequence it, and then upload that information in that database. Yeah. Go ahead. So uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation. You listed a lot of impacts, and I think the, uh, the positive impacts of your project. In your opinion, what is the biggest impact this project will have on the students or even in the community? So yeah, the, the students, you know, they will be invested in something. I mean, they will be, they will have an identity as scientists, which is so important. And that might be a life-changing event that might uh, induce them to go into science if previously they did not. And that it also influences their careers because students have um, asked me for a letter of recommendation and uh, I've written about what they did in these, these projects. I had one student that got into Emily and I wrote you know, like this long letter. I've had other students who applied for scholarships and I've written about the projects that they were involved in. So it, it has a direct impact on the students themselves. On the community itself, you know, you want the public to be interested in science and to know how science works, to, to understand the process of science. Because if nothing else, the last 18 months have taught us that people are easily duped. So we, we need to teach people the process of science. Thank you. Go ahead. <clears throat> How would you break down the barrier within the community to innovate science and have you know, more collective uh, community members come forth and, and join this? So, so you would be open to anybody and everybody. There won't be any barriers. As long as you can get to the campus, you know, you can, you can bring your kids, you can be an older sibling, you can be a grandparent, you can be a mom, and they can all, you know, be involved in the citizen science project. And uh, we would, uh, of course, like keep track of who brought what insect with a little bit of work. And they, we would teach them how to take GPS coordinates because we want to know where they collected that insect on the campus. Um, there wouldn't be any barriers. I mean, if they can get to the campus, you know, there won't be any cost. You know, we try to make it like a fun event, so maybe we can have teachers or something. And, um, and so as far as the research project in my classroom, uh, that, you know, absolutely, as long as they sign up for my class, they can be involved. They don't have to be passing. They don't have to be an A student. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions at this time? Okay, thank you so okay. much. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, we have just finished with our last presentation. I'd like to take this time now to thank our Board of Trustees, our Chancellor, Dr. Curtis L. Ivory, our Innovation Committee, as well as our amazing judges for just having an opportunity to hear new innovations and for our judges being here today. We'd like to ask that you please make sure to check the Chancellor's Weekend memo, one of the upcoming ones, as we will be indicating who will be moving on and receiving funding for their innovation project. And also to please check with our website, as well as the Teaching and Learning Blackboard shell to find out information of when we'll have the next application process for the Chancellor's Annual Innovation Cycle. We thank you so much for, paying, for tuning in today. 
and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I think she was the best. I agree. She was the best. I think she had clarity.